Behold, the Los Angeles Greasy Spoon, the mecca of late night eats, hazy breakfast, and bang for your buck dinners in a city long obsessed with fast food. It's hard to overstate how many of these joints dot the LA landscape. It's not uncommon for one street to have multiple of these bad boys and for them to even have the same name. Now in a time when local family run joints are dropping like flies in favor of larger chains, why has this specific type of restaurant continued to thrive? To answer this question, I called up the homie Alvin Kylon to put me onto his favorite burger spot in LA so we could talk shop. Places like this is why I love foods. But first, let's set the stage. I linked up with LA in a Minute, AKA Evan Lovett, to go over what makes these places tick. The sign, man, the sign. It's like a neighborhood beacon, right? The founder, the owner, putting his name on it like that. George, Tam, Tommy said anybody else mm. this is me my name's on there right so i gotta serve good food and i gotta have bread and i gotta have yellow paper and i gotta have the light up sign and the googie architecture why do you think that all developed by the way how do you think they all kind of have this similar sort of layout menu design what serves one community well spreads and serves another community well la is a driving city it's a city of convenience LA is the home of fast food. As much as we're this health conscious, movie star city, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Panda Express, hot dog on a stick, Carl's Jr., Fat Burger, in and out El Pollo Loco's first restaurant in the United States was in LA. It's greasy Spoon Diners walk so McDonald's and Taco Bell could run. So you know the history of George's? The people that bought George's from the original owners of yeah. Wisados? De La Torre family who bought it from the original owner, George Sedaris. So he's the George. But before it was George's, it was a place called Victory Cafe, owned by Irving Wang, who happened to be a Chinese Jewish person in the 1940s. Yeah. Two doors down, used to be the original Cantor. Mm. Started right here in Boyle Heights, because Boyle Heights used to be a huge Jewish neighborhood. Oh. And the Jewish people, when they immigrated from Romania and Poland and Russia, like pastrami was one of the cherished food items. Boyle Heights essentially is like where pastrami grew up in LA. And that from here, we saw it at every other Greasy Spoon Diner. I mean, you go back to the 1880s, Boyle Heights was one of the first African-American communities. And then it turned into Jewish community, a Japanese community, a Latino community. And these restaurants were popping up and the Greasy Spoon started developing. You have to cater to the neighborhood tastes. This is why we have burritos in front of us. We got the pastrami burger, yeah. chili cheese dog, onion rings, breakfast burrito, bean and cheese burrito, all that. But how LA is that, right? That's just representative of LA culture and that's reflected in the menu, right? Cheers to that. We, we are missing on one burrito, by the way. Right we got one more, Mario special. <laughs> One bite of this, it encapsulates Bro. what a, a greasy spoon diner is. I mean, cause look, it's a burrito, right? Yeah. But it's got the ground beef like a burger. It's got the salsa up in there. Mm. It feels like mm. home taco Tuesday night in a burrito. Mm -hmm. This is very indicative of the greasy spoon diner in Los Angeles. And I think this was so dope about it is because the way it represents the diaspora in the history yeah. of LA, the way it represents the community of LA, the way it represents I guess the ongoing change, the immigrant culture that we're so proud of and stand on here in LA. Yeah. I think that's why it makes a Greasy Spoon Diner the most important LA restaurant. This is the backbone of each community in LA because every community has their Greasy Spoon. Yeah. And man, like you said, this is LA in a bite right here. Now, speaking of neighborhood spots, I felt like the only way to follow up my visit with Evan was to get someone to take me to their favorite local Greasy Spoon burger joint. I knew exactly who to call, my homie and host of the burger show, Alvin Kailan, who told me to meet him at a little spot called Ari's. I mean, this is like an unrealistic amount of pastrami. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I would get this and we would share it. Me, my mother, and my father. Yeah. We would, we would share this weekly. The portion sizes here, ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Because like literally like every working force that drives LA yeah. lives in this area. So they gotta get their money's worth. At my restaurant, I'm giving you a third of this. The people that come to me at my place, they're not trying to eat and be full and take a nap after. This shows like a Tyson left hook. It's a game over, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you're knocked out for sure. You ever have like core memories at a spot like this and then you end up using it later? 
Oh yeah, all the time. I have a chili cheese fries and chili cheese burger on my menu yeah. because I have to. We didn't order regular burgers growing up. It was always chili cheeseburgers, always. So at my restaurant, I gotta get chili. Yeah. Sesame seed bun, have to do sesame seed bun. Like for me, it's not a burger unless the sesame seed on top of the bun. You know what? This is crazy. My fat ass instinctively dipped this French toast in ranch. <laughs> That's a Filipino. You have Filipino because it's like sweet and savory. Yeah, I was like, I just grabbed this, dipped it like it was nothing. I realized there's ranch in here. I don't know if you saw, but I threw a piece of pastrami on there. <laughs> I feel like Ari's probably has the biggest following. I mean, like it's like 130 on a Thursday afternoon. And it's popping. It's popping, dude. But on Sunday nights, this street right here, is jam packed full of lowriders. Oh, yeah. Good. So, growing up, we would come here, like me and my friends, we'd have like our little Sony handyman camera, and we would literally just record all the lowriders drive by, go back home, recap, and be like, one day we're going to put it to your boulevard. And you know what? People will be posted up at spots like this, right? And everyone would convene here, show off their cars, show off their old school Chevys, yeah. and then grab DUI fries, and that was like a Sunday evening. DUI fries are as essential to LA as the street dog, the Dodger dog, tacos. Dude, DUI fries is where I'm from. I'm from Pico Rivera, California, bro. DUI fries are french fries, chili, cheese, carne asada, and thinly sliced pastrami. Like the myth was, is that like, you get DUI fries so you, you eat it when you're drunk and you, it sobers you up. That's the myth I heard too, that's yeah. the lore. I'm pretty sure that DUI fries was just like some dude who was mad hungry yeah. and was like, hey, I want all that shit on my fries. That's what's special about LA Grease Career. You know what I mean? They do have that viral stuff, but it's because the community wanted it. There was a time when we were like, oh, it's the, our shit gotta be viral. Sure, there's an element yeah. of that and then we'll never go away anymore. But now it's just like, the we gotta think about the legacy. You and I were both in the food game. Yeah. We've just witnessed hundreds of restaurants closing up, right, in the last four years. These are still here. Are so Greasy Spoon's the food proof restaurant? In LA, yeah. I aspire to make restaurants like this. I no longer want to make a, a hot, hype restaurant. I, I want to be a staple. Every restaurant that I ever created, I always had that in mind. When I created Egg Slut, I didn't want to open, well, I don't know how many there are, 30 now? I wanted one. Yeah. I wanted to be the Langers of downtown LA. Like, I wanted to be like, that quintessential Tommy's like spot, you know? Oh, okay. So Amboy, I'm trying to make my way or pave my way into that lane where 14, 15 years from now, 50 years from now, you know, someone who grew up eating my burgers can always just rely that my burger stand will give them that same satisfaction. Yo. <laughs> Dude, talk about growth. Cause like, it took me a while to understand, like, this restaurant industry, this game of ours. And I realized places like this is why I love food. Like, just, it's more than just this, it's the entire feeling. This. This. The name. The cars driving by. Like, the kids coming in, eating, ordering, seeing, like, the past me. Older people coming in, seeing the future me. It's generational, bro. The generation. It's gonna be here forever. I hope so. I know so. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a like and a follow and let us know what we should explore next.